All you factory brained individuals out there, listen up. There is a new one. Yes, it's got conveyor belts, complex production chains, all that stuff I know you love. But it's also voxel based. The environment is fully destructible. You can sculpt the world to your heart's content. This is Foundry. And to sum it up in four words, it's satisfactory meets Minecraft. A match made in heaven, you might say. But let's see what it's got going for it. What makes Foundry different from the rest of the pack? The big draw is the voxel world. The environment is fully destructible and you can manipulate and destroy as you please. It's got a vibrant and stylized presentation and it simply feels easy to play. By that, I don't mean it's dumbed down. It's just smooth. Movement is fluid. Things connect together and function as you'd expect them to. Everything works with the player. Also, you're a robot. Maybe a selling point, maybe not. Depends on your stance on robots, I guess. It's the first game from developer Channel 3 Entertainment who are uniquely based in both Canada and Austria. I'm not sure how that works either. The founders made their mark already at Clay, playing important parts in the development of Hot Lava, Don't Starve Together, and Oxygen Not Included, which is a pretty impressive resume. So there's a lot of brains behind the operation, and it's published by Paradox. Now they're as big as they get in the grand strategy genre, and with this they're branching out into new waters. In terms of getting into the factory automation race, they've put their money on a reliable stallion here, as Foundry has some real chops. It is releasing into early access, which I know is a red flag for many, but I will say it did feel very feature rich with no shortage of things to do. I will talk more about what's lacking and what pitfalls to expect, but first let's dive into what's ready and available to the player. You'll land on an alien world ripe for a bit of automated exploitation. Your link with mission control has been severed, so while you wait for that to get sorted out, your job is to follow your programming. Build, refine, expand. There's a tiny bit of busy work in the opening segment as you lug around materials and refine by hand, but I think that's necessary. It makes it feel all the more satisfying when you set up your inaugural conveyor belt and automate the manual labor for the first time. And from there, it is a constant cycle of expanding to produce more advanced recipes, scaling up, and then fixing the half-assed jobs you made earlier. And that's the draw. It can always be better. You're guided in your journey by a very likeable Australian robot companion, Carl, who will set you bite-sized tasks to get you up and running. Basic milestones to tick off. The progression is rewarding. Every now and then you'll have a new tool to play with. This may be a new way to refine materials, or the simple joy that comes with a handful of dynamite. One of my initial gripes with the game was that I wished it utilized more of the voxel design, but a little later on you will come across deposits underground. You come equipped with a drill and can burrow down to them if you really want, or you could just do a bit of blast mining. I went for option two. There's a balance that this game strikes well. On one hand, you've got the satisfying reward of laying down conveyors and automating systems. You're fixing little puzzles and making your brain feel accomplished. On the other hand, there's a simpler enjoyment that just comes out of moving around, exploring, blowing shit up. It's definitely geared towards the former, but having the latter helps tie together the various segments of problem solving. Ultimately though, it is a sandbox. You're given the means and the freedom to do what you want with the tools you have. You're not just constrained to sprawling factory spaces, you can build up, achieve efficiency through verticality, which was what I had in mind here when I started off this project. Yeah, didn't get very far with it. Treading that fine line between guided and free keeps these sorts of games ticking. This has almost got the balance right. You get little nudges in the right direction here and there, but after 10 hours or so, I still wasn't sure what my actual end goal was. Satisfactory, you've got the space elevator to work towards and deliveries to complete. You have a purpose. But this felt murkier, like I'm just building all this stuff to keep myself busy until I receive further orders. Now, I know a lot of people do prefer having the reins looser. It is personal preference. A lot of satisfaction comes from setting yourself personal goals and projects. You don't want to follow a checklist, you just want to do things your own way. For me though, at times it was hard to know where that focus should be placed, and sometimes motivation dwindled as I didn't feel like I had some grand plan to work towards. But that's not something I will condemn the game for. There are signs of an ultimate purpose, and chances are they are buried in the tech tree and I just didn't reach them because I'm a bit slow. I am still just scratching the surface and have a big journey ahead of me. Remember, it's early access. Looking at the research tree you can see there's a hell of a way for me to go. 
Now some of you factory building aficionados will surely zip through this tech much faster than I did, but even so, there's a very healthy amount of progression to get through at this stage. There are some areas where I think the game definitely needs some work. I don't think the voxel design is being utilised fully, explosives or otherwise. A bit more purpose built into the manipulation of terrain, as well as simply making destroying blocks feel satisfying through crunchy audiovisual feedback, will really elevate the big selling point. And then as the early access period ensues, there'll be more content added and options provided to the player. There's a fairly in-depth summary on their Steam page that I would recommend reading before you buy. I'll leave a link in the video description. I will say though, the actual bones of this game feel really robust. Movement is great, zero performance issues or bugs. Things just worked. The UI could definitely use a bit of extra functionality and a bit more panache, but most of the time, I forgot this was early access. It's real smooth. The system requirements are also very low, which is a nice surprise in this day and age. I tested it out on my Steam Deck as well, and at this point in the game it was running great on medium to high settings. Now that may not be a selling point for most, but it is just a good way for me to ensure that it can run on a range of hardware. I think this game has a lot of promise. While the voxel angle should certainly be focused on more, a few key changes could really make that a feature that sets this game apart in the genre. At its core, it is familiar though. Those of you who are feeling burnt out on Satisfactory or the likes will find a lot to like here. Everything just works, and I wish that wasn't such a rarity in early access. I felt very little was working against me. It just feels well made. The heavy hitters in the genre have built up high expectations thus far, and players want something that feels as rewarding to play. This may fall short here and there in content and scope, but there's no fundamental problems that can't be fixed while in its final development stages. I've heard the multiplayer still has a few teething problems, but when those are fixed and the voxel side is a bit more prominent in the game design, I think this can evolve from something that's a solid game for factory designers to something that has an obvious draw to a wider audience. And that would be a great thing. Let's not kid ourselves, a factory builder can be formidable for newcomers. Something that gets their feet wet and turns them into one of us, well, I'm fully on board with that. So that's your lot on Foundry. I think this is great, very satisfying to play. It's still got a ways to go, but the state it's in now tells great things for its future. If you've had your eye on this, let me know. Get your thoughts down in that comment box, and feel free to mock my terrible conveyor designs. I already know they suck, I am under no disillusions there. Drop me a like and subscribe if you want more strategy slash simulation previews in your life, and I will catch you next time.